here we are in beautiful British Columbia, by far the most unbelievable part of the entire continent. Uh, here. In the in the summer, we were, she was at the the school that I teach at in New Zealand, and uh, on one of the nights, I had left my baseball hat lying in the dining room because when you go to the dining room in this boys' school where we have the school, you've got to take your hats off, okay. and so I had it sitting on my the, the on my chair, you know. Uh -huh. And I walked out the room thinking that, and not even noticing that I had, hadn't picked it up, just figuring that the hat was still on my head. Uh -huh. And I walked in and I had to give a, I was given a talk. <laughs> and Steph says, I can't believe you've got a full head of hair. She says, I've imagined that you were bald underneath there and that's why you wore a hat all the time. Did you only ever saw the hat? Yeah, it was kind of, kind of hilarious. Like, no, I said, it's just something nope. that I wear. Yeah, I, I remember one thing you said to me which is, you know, everyone, of course, knows you with the hat. Then you can, if you can spot one person in Glasgow on the green, you can spot Reed from a mile away because of that hat. You know That's why, awesome. you know why it came about? I decided that at five foot five, it's very hard to find you in a crowd because you can't make yourself taller and platform shoes went out when John Travolta done Saturday Night Fever, you know? <laughs> so it's like, wear a bright hat. And so I wore an orange hat back in the day because it matched the band Kilt. That was the only reason. I, 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 and of course, orange is bright, you know. And, exactly. and, and people physically actually think that the hat that I'm wearing right now is the same hat I've been wearing for 25 years. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no, no I, I change it. And, and I've, I've had several over the years. That's but that's kind of, it's, it's become a, a little bit of a prop in as much that people, you know, and then occasionally I don't wear one because I have several hats, baseball right. hats, I don't know. Uh, but uh, it, that's that's why the guys can always find me. Yeah. You know, and then, and it's be but it's became kind of more than that. It's become a sort of signature color. I mean, you, you do now have orange accenting your yeah. drummer. Yeah, and we have so orange yes, cases. That's like, right. there's no way in the world that those SFU cases go missing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I can spot, like, you know when you leave your shit line alone with right. a bunch of other stuff? I can find my shit. Exactly. <laughs> Amongst 50 drum cases, like there's mine right there because nobody else has <laughs> that shit. one, you know. There's the quote from Reed Maxwell. I can find my shit, Reed Maxwell. <laughs> the word that he, he's used to some of my guys is, when SFU start the rolls, it's just electric. It's just, ah. It's awesome. Yeah, and you know how Johnny can be quite yeah, angry. Yeah, he's, he's quite the character, you know. And so I think the guys get that from myself in terms of, you know, what we're looking for. One of the things I find with the the um, the American rudimental drummer mm -hmm. or the American rudimental drumming approach right. is it's it lacks the intensity because it's. I think that. How would I say this now? Um, it's got too much exact behind it and yeah. not enough heart behind it. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, if I were playing a basic 25 stroke roll, I think that you would probably say, I like that. Sure. But when the American rudimentalists play, there's a little bit too much this going on. So mm -hmm. it becomes more of a and they don't seem to be able to close mm. this down. Right. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll say to students, I want you to roll, and then I'm gonna place my hand over your stick, the tips of your sticks. And I'm going to be a little bit generous to guarantee that you don't touch my hand. Mm -hmm. And it, I find that with people from a rudimental background, they find that very hard to do. Yeah. where people who have no rudimental drumming background find it easier to do. Yeah. And so I wonder about something in the basic training of the, the rudimental type style drummer that causes them to do that. In other words, for example, is it, I think it's a mind over matter thing more than it's not getting it. Yeah. And so, you know, that lifting and playing from a certain... You know, I, I think what it is, um, I mean, you know, certainly there's a lot of intensity and just strength and power in American drumming. Right. But, you know, American drummers are taught that buzz rolls are finesse 
and yet buzz rolls are both finesse and power. In right, fight right. And so I, I think, I, I think that the the added body stuff comes from they just don't know where else to turn to, you know. That they simply start adding more arm because they can't get the power from their buzzes with with the smoothness that they hear from the awesome Scottish drummers. Right. You know, because I mean the the biggest defect for American drummers when they try to do Scottish stuff is the fingers. Right. right. This isn't there. Right. And you know, as you said, for doubles and buzzes and pipe band drumming, there's always some degree of yes. this. Yes. You know. So I mean, American drummers know power, but they don't know power with buzzes. Right. And they don't know power like pipe band drummers know power. It's right. two different you you have to grab something different to be powerful in pipe band. Okay. So power. let me talk to you about baseball because I know that you're baseball. Yeah. Okay. Would it be fair to say that when someone chucks a ball with exceedingly high velocity that it doesn't come from just here it's a little bit of leg strength? Oh, and it's how it's all delivered and how you turn your body Absolutely. and you make all of that work right through to when the ball releases off the end of your fingers. 100%. Am I, it's a full body, a full soul experience. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So when we play a role, it's how we use our arm, wrist, finger, thumb to get that sound. Mm -hmm. It's the integration of all of that as a f as the physics of m of producing the sound yeah. that we that we can do that maybe is not because because I can get this sound because that's the only way I've ever been taught what to do. But I'm using all of those components. But when I pull and I talked about it earlier when I talked about. When you get when you play your singles, and then you get a little bit quicker, it's all there. But when I'm playing doubles and stuff like that, the, the arm is still ever so slightly engaged in the buzzes. It's you know, but there's a little tiny bit of wrist. You can see, you can see that, and you can see that my thumb, because, you know, like I said to people. Why do they call those little things that you hang up with posters, why do they call them thumbtacks? And then people think about that and say, uh, because you push them in with your thumb? That's right. They're not called index finger tacks or pinky tacks. They're thumbtacks because nobody would take an, uh, uh, anything and press it in with anything but their thumb. Why is that? So I try to make sure that people understand that. The reason you use your thumb is because it's of the five digits that you've got on, there's four fingers and a thumb, and your thumb is the strongest one of all of them. Mm -hmm. And you can just see it by looking at the size of the muscle at the base of it to absolutely confirm that. Yeah. And it's a combination of the fingers that gives you the same power in the right that the one thing on the left can give you. So you need, I play with just the the, the middle and, and ring finger on my stick. Some people play with a pinky. I tuck mine behind. Uh, I think that that becomes a, a comfort thing and, and I don't subscribe one over the other, whatever you think. In fact, the guy who taught me to play only used his middle finger. He would play that way. I can play that way only because I've seen him do it, but it, it doesn't feel, it never at any time felt comfortable. And I always thought that it was because I had a smaller hand and he had a bigger hand. You know, he was six feet tall, had a bigger hand, I was five feet five, you know, slightly smaller, chubby kind of hand. So I wonder, I wonder about that, the sort of the physical size of someone, sure. you know. More meat, more sounds. Yeah, you know, yeah. Sure. And one of the things, for example, you would, you'll notice this with Taylor tomorrow, Taylor can get a big sound, like she's my height, but she's, you know, she's got to be about 105 pounds maybe. But when she plays, you'll notice that there's quite a sound there. You know, I mean, it's not like a little girl, 18 year old girl sound. It's like, a, it's a real, it's a, it's a mature drum sound, you know? Excellent. It's, it's pretty impressive, you know? Because one of the things I like to do in class when I have a class of various ages, let's say I've got a little eight or nine year old and he's playing and he's getting a bit of a sound going and then you got a 13 year old and it's like 
you know what I normally do? I'll say, right, Joe, stand up. Michael, stand up. Joe, look at Michael. How tall does he look to you? Okay. Does he look like he's as big as you are? No. Does he look like he's as heavy as you are? No. Okay, so how can a little munchkin like that get a bigger sound than a big old guy like you? It makes them think about that. You know what I mean? And it's, it's just the, it's the physics of it a little bit. That's awesome. And this is just another thing where I think that drummers and percussionists <clears throat> have a different experience than any other instrumentalist. We are much more tactile. We, we have to physically feel things right. in a much deeper way because there's more of our body on our instruments, you know, mm -hmm. where at the same time, there's none of our body on our instrument. We would never actually touch right. the drum. Right. It's interesting. It's an interesting connecting disconnect, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that was a really awesome thing to talk about, that we often let how the sticks feel or how we feel when we play cloud our actual sound. That's cool. See, when you do something on the left like that, when you play it like a roll, it feels icky, yeah. okay? The terminology that I use when I'm teaching classes, it's like running in wet socks. Have you ever had wet socks and your shoe, stuck your shoes on? It feels icky. That's what it feels like when I make you play something on the other hand. It feels icky. But when you ask me to critique what you're playing, I don't know that your socks are wet. I just can just say, oh, that sounded really good. I like your running shoes. That's I didn't beautiful. say, I like your running shoes better if your socks weren't wet. I just say, nice new runners. Because I don't, you know? And so you have to build if you have to build if go through that, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I played a lot. I was going to play two three pace rolls again. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Two, okay. Two, two, okay. Yeah. Play one, two, and we're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Would you, you, you want me to hold the, the sheet music for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, we're here to help, no By the way, while I'm thinking about this, I'll forget. Michael, the first time I heard the, the, the word trislet was from yourself. Where did you get it? I, I've been asked this a lot. Um, I think the answer to that is either John Quigg or my first instructor, who's a jazz drummer from Austin who did a lot of high band stuff named John Green. Oh, yeah. So it's one of those two Johns. Right. We, you know, we were, I was, use it all the time yeah. because... When when you use the when you use the triplet roll, people try to make too much of a roll out of. Exactly. And even those words triplet roll make it so many different things. Yes. Trizzlet, 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 trizzlet. Yeah. Yeah, we use that all the time. It's a, it's an absolutely awesome. incredibly accurate word. It's like paradiddle. It's like paradiddle. It's like trizzlet. It I mean, it, it, when you say it, trizzlet, trizzlet. It sounds exactly like it does, but yours didn't sound like that, so can you try again? <laughs> All that said, I don't know about that. <laughs> can we have the last one? Beautiful, cool. I'm actually gonna adjust your lapel. Chin's hitting it a little bit when you, uh, when you move down. This is great footage right here. Reed Maxwell, Matt Green, but the dynamic this is what the people want to see. That's a, that's it's a perfect match. <laughs> we all know how Reed can drum, but what about Matt Hurley's butt? <laughs> and we give the people what they want. That's right. You, I, should, we, you, should, you should keep all the stuff that's oh said God. because yeah. there will be a time down the road where yeah. an outtakes oh, yeah. thing is going to be the thing yeah, that gets be. the next bunch of people. We have, there's um, no baseball team here. E well, there is. There's the Vancouver Canadians, which is one of the most successful non-major league baseball teams in the entire continent, they tell me. 
What are they? Are they, they minor league? They're, uh, I think they're a single A baseball team. They're a single A, a single A baseball team. They play yeah. a, an old fashioned, old school stadium down in Vancouver called Nat Bailey Stadium, I think it's called. Oh, and they basically sell out every game. It's very popular with the the lunch business crowd as well, like, you know, mm. clients in the summer. I don't think the season's quite started yet because in some regards, hockey season's like really not over in, so, in Canada here. It's so it's over. you got to wait until it's really over and then people will start to notice things, you know. That's awesome. So I agree. I think Vancouver could be the most spectacular city on the continent. Only there's no Major League Baseball. <laughs> but if we go check out this place and it's hot, then then that that need is fulfilled. All right, cool. So yeah, good to go. All right, so how about we start talking about Reed Maxwell's five core principles of drumming? Yeah, I've always been. Uh...